today with me, Chetty Narula. We're right here at the DLF Golf and Country Club in Gurgaon, a rather very well manicured golf course, I must say, at a time now when the government is considering a super regulator for the financial services. And of course, the parliament is also debating FDI and insurance. The sector seems to be headed for some impending changes. Joining me today is the CEO and the managing director of Aviva Life Insurance. On the show this week, we have T.R. Ramachandran, CEO and MD, Aviva India. Pension as a segment needs sharp focus, needs a lot of attention from government, from the private sector, from LIC, from everybody, because it's a huge social security risk that India faces today. In news, Brett Rumford wins Ballantine's championship in playoff, and SSP Chorasya finishes tied 11th at Ballantine's championship. Welcome to Tea Time today with me. It's lovely such a pleasure here. to have you here. Lovely to be here. It's a great day to play golf. Indeed, very hot. Absolutely but perfect weather. You live right here? I live in Gurgaon, so it's close by to have a championship course four kilometers away from home. Interesting. So now let's hit the brass track straight away. Now at a time when the parliament is debating FDI and insurance and also the FM has hinted for an increased capital requirement for the insurance sector lately, how important do you think is this move? I think uh, FDI at least from 26 to 49 is something which the industry has been clamoring for a long right. time. Right. Apart from the obviously increasing the interest of, uh, of foreign stakeholders Correct. in the industry, I think FDI is also required from the country's perspective both to increase the penetration of insurance and given where the current account uh, deficit is, some foreign institution inflows can't hurt. Now the bill may also put LIC under its purview. Do you think LIC should also uh, follow the same solvency ratio norms like the other private players do? I think the bill, apart from 49% uh, itself, has a whole host of um, criteria. For example, it devolves a lot of powers from the purview of parliament to the purview of the regulator, which is right. critical for the industry, both in terms of uh, enabling tier two capital, in terms of increasing uh, the regulatory empowerment and so on and so forth. Which is why I believe that whether it's uh, all the provisions of the bill, I mean, the headline is the 49%, but there's a whole bunch of other stuff in the bill which I think is critical for the industry's perspective which is why the industry is you know looking forward to this for quite a long period of time. Is Aviva Global planning to uh, get more involved in India? Aviva Global has always been involved in India because even though the ownership is 26 percent the management, the expertise, product development, technology all these are provided by the um, foreign uh, institution investor which in this case is Aviva so like any other player we want to have a long-term uh, commitment to the country and anything that increases the level of uh, involvement is always welcome. So the increased capital requirement, of course, it will give a boost to the ins insurance sector. Do you agree to that? Yes, I think it will. I think because one, capital is required for increasing the penetration of insurance. The, right. in the sector itself is only a decade old. Right. And if you see the newer companies are three, four, five years old, and insurance being a long tail business, I think the capital requirement is, you know, at least there for the next four to five years. Although the older players may not require capital, some of the newer players certainly will. So on average, capital requirement is critical to the industry. Now, in the past few years, we've seen SEBI and the IRD locking horns over the jurisdiction of unit-linked insurance plans. And of course, now you have a PFRD as well to consider. Do you think a super regulator is an answer to all these problems? I know that recently the government, uh, there was the uh, Sri Krishna Commission report which referred to the super regulator. But I think more than whether it's one regulator or many, yeah. uh, I think the onus is to divide prudential regulation on one side right. con and consumer protection on the other. 
Whether it's done by the ambit of one regulator, two regulators is not that relevant. As indeed it is, because different regulators no, are at different No, but they are fighting stages. over the jurisdiction of the market-linked insurance plans. The, you've got SEBI on one hand, you've got IRDA on the other hand, and then you have PFRD as well to consider. Yeah, so the pension bill, as and when it comes, is an adjunct to the insurance bill. So I'm not really that fussed about whether PFRDA will govern pensions or whether the IRDA will. The more critical thing to my mind is when you have stuff like um, risk-based capital, solvency, those sorts of prudential regulation that's required right. on the one side. Right. On the other hand, it's consumer empowerment, increasing financial literacy, uh, how do you prevent mis-selling, money laundering, those sorts of consumer aspects. Right. So my um, personal preference would be if the regulator can differentiate between having prudential regulation and sort of protecting the policyholders' interests on the one side and consumer empowerment on the other. Uh, and for example, one of the stuff that in the super regulator um, sort of uh, news that I was reading is that RBI's monetary policy aspect will be divvied up from what RBI does in the open markets and right. the bank supervision side. Right. A similar structure on insurance as well. And IRD is already doing it, but you have to recognize that it's a new regulator and it's a new industry. So the move from a rules-based regulator to a principles-based regulator will, I suspect, take you know, a reasonable amount of time. It doesn't happen overnight. Uh, but I think if you try to compress and catch up with the West, I think, which is the intent of the regulator, I think the intent is not wrong, but I think the implementation could have been done with a little more pace and nuance. All right. Time now for us to play a chip shot on that note. Now, customers of insurance are moving from unit-linked insurance products to more traditional insurance products. We will discuss this with Ram in much detail on the other side of this break. So take a quick break right here on Tea Time. We'll see you on the other side. Thank you for staying with us on Tea Time. Now, we were in conversation with Ram, who is the Managing Director and CEO of Aviva Life Insurance. Ram, uh, we were discussing why uh, customers of unit-linked insurance uh, programs, uh, products, sorry, rather, have moved from ULIPS to more traditional products over the past couple of years. Now, this would you say this is thanks to bad markets and possibly a case of mis-selling as well? What is going wrong? Market certainly is one, one big factor. Um, after 2008, 2009, um, after the financial crisis, etc., uh, there's obviously reluctance on customers' parts right. to invest in equity. We've seen that in the mutual fund redemptions as well. The other thing is, of course, the new regulations on unit-linked uh, products, which have made these products far more long-term from a customer perspective. Mis-selling, you know, the problem on mis-selling and the issue of mis-selling on ULIPS, it's not so much mis-selling as the fact that the customers wanted liquidity, whereas the products were actually locked in, which is something the new regulations takes into account. As far as traditional products are concerned, I also think that a lot of customers now are understanding that the protection part of insurance is becoming more and more important, which is actually protecting your family and your life. So that, that market share of that segment, I think, is increasing, uh, particularly in the last 48 uh, months or so. Now, we're a country that is uh, underinsured and, of course, underplanned as far as retirement is concerned. And the push from the government definitely seems to be towards the guaranteed uh, returns. Now, do you think, as a country, we will be unable to meet those returns and we run a risk of not being able to meet those returns in the near future? I think, as a country, we face two risks um, which need coverage. The risk of dying too young and the risk of living too long. And pensions is an important part of addressing the latter risk. Right. And NPS and the other schemes... I like the way schemes, you describe it though, dying, yeah. <laughs> dying too young and living too long. Living too long. Um, but pensions as a category, I think my own personal belief is over a long term, you need some equity mix in the assets to beat inflation. And equity as an asset class over a 30, 40 year period will always inevitably outperform other asset classes. So the concern really is that while the principal may still be protected and the, and the instruments are invested long tenor, the customer may not get enough return to beat inflation, which is why a judicious blend of equity and debt, when you're younger, more equity in the portfolio, as you near retirement, more fixed income, is probably the right way to do pension planning in this country. But irrespective of how it's done, I think pension as a segment needs sharp focus, needs a lot of attention, 
from government, from the private sector, from LIC, from everybody, because it's a huge social security risk that India faces today. Now, there's a report that is published that has highlighted that the uh, top 10 insurance companies have uh, beaten the Nifty over the past uh, one year on the Nifty. Now, why is it that insurance returns do not really get highlighted like the mutual fund returns in India? Well, Aviva was one of those companies which um, was covered in the report. It's featured so. in one of the top 10 yes, that beat yeah, the Nifty. Yeah. But I think uh, in insurance fund managers tend to invest for the long term. Right. They tend to invest not necessarily bottom up but top down in terms of picking sectors which are which can give returns to the customer over a 10, 15, 20 year period. So the investment philosophy tends to be somewhat different and protection is very, very important because preserving um, the, the customer's uh, investments is of paramount importance to an insurance um, fund manager. And uh, the various themes, whether it's public sector, infrastructure, um, broader equity sensex theme has played out quite well for most insurance companies. Like I said earlier, the issue is not so much the returns on unit link product as the lack of liquidity that customers, I think, were uh, unhappy about in the past. Now, in the budget speech, the FM has hinted that now the banks can become brokers now and uh, obviously sell more than one insurance product per bank. Now, how is the distribution channel likely to change? I think for a company like Aviva, which is bank assurance centric, I think it's a, it's a very, very welcome development. And I think even from a customer perspective, having choice in a bank and the bank being offered to sell products of, which are relevant to a customer from more than one company, like banks sell products of more than one mutual fund today, I think is a very welcome step. We'll have to wait and see if the regulation will change to allow that, both from an RBI and IRDA perspective. But it's something most insurance companies are quite eagerly looking forward to as a measure to augment distribution. You're also focusing very uh, largely on online insurance as well. Take us through that program. I think online as a channel has tremendous scope uh, in this country. I mean, we launched our online business uh, 24 months ago and have seen a remarkable amount of uptake. We already have 50,000 customers, I think. Um, and given the transparency and the price, I think online as a channel can only grow in leaps and bounds and more and more companies will put their products online, which is a very welcome thing from an individual customer viewpoint. So the online insurance channels are pecked to grow leaps and bounds, according to Ram. On the other side of this break, we will discuss a little more in detail about what's new at Aviva and discuss bank insurance in more detail as well. Take a quick break right here on Tea Time. Ram and I will see you on the other side of this break. Welcome back. You're still tuned into Tea Time with me, Chetty Narula, and we're in conversation with the Managing Director and CEO of Aviva Life Insurance, Ram. Ram, now we were discussing about online insurance. Now, is online insurance only about the pricing game? Does it leave you any scope for innovation as such? And how long do you think prices will last at this rate? Firstly, I think um, as more younger Indians buy insurance, prices will come down. Right. Because younger people will live longer. It's as simple as that. I think it's not just about price. It's also about customer convenience. It's about reputation management. It's about right. whether the customer believes you will pay your claims on time. Right. Um, but I think more sophisticated products and more complex products are not amenable to be sold online. Customers like simplicity, transparency, and ease of buying. Like any other product, whether it's travel, whether it's shopping or whatever else it is. Make it simple for the customer and more customers will buy. Now on a lighter note, you signed Sachin Tendulkar as your brand ambassador in the year 2007, what one assumes would be at a very substantial cost. So how has that helped your company? I think Sachin has been terrific. Um, the values which he embodies of longevity, of excellence, are something uh, we'd like our customers to associate with Aviva. Right. Our brand scores have gone up significantly from the mid-70s to I think it's now late 80s. Uh, he has a universal appeal, uh, transcending young, old, urban, rural. Absolutely. I think that, that's worked out pretty well. Also, we don't use Sachin merely as a cricketer. We use him as a father, we use him as a family person. He embodies great family values, uh, middle class values, which is terrific for us. Now, your company has exuberated a lot of uh, corporate social responsibility. From what I understand, 5 lakh school children is what you all have reached out so far. Yeah. Tell us more about that project and what more CSR are you planning along the way? I think that's a subject which is close to my heart um, and it ties in well into what we do on the marketing side. Uh, because as a company, we positioned ourselves around the child space in India, India being a very young demographic. 65% uh, of uh, India's youth, have, there you go. I mean, less than of India's population old. is yeah. less than 35 yeah. years old. Yeah. Um, and I, I think a lot can be done in this particular um, aspect. We have a program called Street to School. The intent is really to take kids who haven't been that privileged as you or me 
and give them the benefits of a good education. Mm. Uh, we put more than 80,000 children uh, and given them security and, and health and education and stuff like that. I think there's more to do, there's lots more to do in that space, but I think companies need to take the first step into seeing how they can blend CSR with the core profit business model. Absolutely. And talking about core profit business model, what's new at Aviva? Next is always there's more to do. We've just scratched the surface. I think the online space, like I mentioned, is something that we are focusing upon. Uh, a lot of impending changes in the sector as well, of course. Yeah, and one has to constantly live with it because change is a constant in this business. But uh, I'm excited about the potential and the opportunity in this business. There's lots, lots more to do. We have a new chairman um, who's just taken over at, at the regulator's office. So a lot is expected from Mr. Vijayan as well. So given a combination of what's happening in the economy, what's happening in terms of potential in the country and what we are planning to do. I think there's lots to keep me occupied when I'm not on the course. When you're not on the course, but I want to know a little more when you're on the course, what happens to you, but after we finish our game. Nice roll. Okay, Ram, you mentioned that there's lots that you would like to do in the CSR space once you're off the course. But now we've not spoken about what you do when you're on the course. How long do you play golf for in a week? Uh, I wish I could play every day, but I get to play about twice a week, not, not twice a month. Not as uh, nearly as often as I'd like, it's but a it's game. a very uh, relaxing game. It yes. sort of takes my mind off some of the pressures. I'm no good at it, but I'm trying to learn. No, and you're fabulous to at it. You play a lot of corporate golf challenges? Corporate golf is not um, as, as uh, exhausting as amateur golf is. Which one did you play? I played the um, uh, standard chartered open yesterday. How was that? That was good fun. I finished a short 92, so not bad. And going forward, which are the other corporate challenges that you are intending to play in the next few months to come? Well, uh, this summer I'm planning to take my wife to St. Andrews, which is the holy grail of golf. Oh yes, that that's supposed to be the best in the world. Yeah, that should be fun. Looking forward to it. And you're taking your wife to Andrews, you said. Your wife also plays golf. Fortunately, she's not a golf widow. She plays golf as well, which is one good way Lovely. to uh, prevent marital disharmony <laughs> over the weekends. Which are the golfers that you look up to? Uh, I think I'm a great fan of Tiger, irrespective of what's happening in his personal life. And his man plays an incredible round of golf. Um, Baba, in the, in the new generation, has got a great drive. Uh, there are plenty of exciting golfers coming out of Europe and in Asia, in fact. G plays a good round. I think India is producing a lot of young golfers, which is good to see. But you say that India really lacks public driving ranges actually for golf because it's become more of an elitist sport. It's more enjoyed by the corporates, it's more enjoyed by entrepreneurs, people who have the money in their pockets to be able to afford this game. But what I conspicuously see lacking in this country is the lack of public driving ranges which will actually drive the masses into the, playing this game. How much do you agree? I completely this? agree with you. In fact, on this course itself, there are a couple of caddies who play a brilliant game. Right. Uh, if more children and more kids are given a chance to pick up the game and it becomes more widespread in the country, I think it'll be absolutely terrific. It's a great game, more people should pick it up. Which other sports do you enjoy apart from golf? Uh, I'm a cricket enthusiast, obviously, with Sachin and everything else. And with the IPL season, so... Uh, IPL not so much, I'm more a test cricket kind of guy, but I thoroughly enjoy cricket. Um, and I, I used to play earlier, but now with my back... You watch think... cricket a lot as well, or you only play? I usually watch some of the Sachin games, I don't get to watch that much, but I used to play earlier, but I think it's a fascinating sport. Do you uh, but after golf, it's yeah. difficult to play anything else. The Indian Premier League is something which is doing really well in cricket, and now we have also have the Golf Premier League as well, on the lines of the IPL. How good a news is it for the sport as a whole? I think it's terrific for the sport, um, because uh, the Indian Golf Union and the IGA yes. are planning to put together this uh, sport. It's a great beginning. Already you're seeing in Calcutta, Bombay, uh, Bengaluru, Delhi, a lot of uh, new golfers entering the game and I think it's, it's a terrific endorsement. I'm uh, looking forward to see what we can do in that space as well. Interesting time now for me to finish my game now. Nice one. Thank you. Thank you so much Ram for joining me today on the show. It was indeed a pleasure to have you. My pleasure to be here. Thank you. That's a wrap from Ram and me on Tea Time. I will see you next week again. Until then, stay insured and of course, may the sport be with you.